come with us for a romantic saucy ride. <laughs> Love it. Buckle up. That's a gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buckle <it> up. <laughs> For me personally, for Kate, it was just staying true to her um, priorities and her her values, and that is um, her family and her sister. And I think that's a heartbeat that kind of remained throughout the whole series and influenced Kate's actions and intentions um, quite deeply. I strongly wanted to make her someone that um, rooted for women, rooted for her sister in particular, and um, I just wanted to make sure that I was always true to that. With Anthony, I've always sort of understood where he's coming from. Being able to stand a step forward and, and to, to be to be at the front and centre of the story this year is that you get to sort of show that understanding and hopefully explore it. But for him, it's it's the same. They're, they're, they're a match, and so they have that same sense of self and, and duty and responsibility within their family and the love of their siblings, which sometimes you know means that they get they get things wrong. But um, they're fallible and they're flawed, but they're also full-hearted and, and complicated. So, yeah. Um, so my my process to Edwina um, really sort of starts from the truth. Like I try to relate to her and find her truth and how I can connect with that. Obviously, Edwina's quite different from the source material, so it was also having conversations with Chris Van Dusen and the respective directors that we worked with. But truthfully, for me, it was an ongoing process. So I found out that every day I kept learning more and more about her. Um, which is quite exciting. Certainly for me, Edwina wasn't fully figured out in my head. I don't even think she is now. The first book I read in the Bridgerton series was book four, which is Penelope and Colin's book. You know, it was. it's always good to have that in the back of my mind, but also I know in that book she's like 28, so she's a lot older than she is in, in the stories. So I have that <clears throat> as sort of a grounding, but I kind of in my head also go, she's not there yet. So. I think I have to use the script as sort of my bible and sort of go go with it but I think also because it's an adaptation not everything that's you know from the book is in there so it's all sort of a created a created world but the script was just so well written and and so much fun and you know I love that she has this sort of alter ego that she gets to to play with and all of that yeah so it's yeah it's great I think Penelope's really inspiring because I feel like she doesn't want to compromise. She wants to have a career, she wants to write, she wants to do, you know, what's, what's in her heart and she also doesn't want to compromise her voice. She wants to, you know, be free to kind of criticise society and she's sort of not scared to do that but then she also wants love she also wants very traditional things she wants marriage and she wants all of that too so I think She's very modern in that way in that she wants to have everything and I hope she can have everything. Just um, what an honour and how wonderful is it that we're having these conversations and that shows like these, shows like this are being made where um, we are representing minorities and um, continuing to have these conversations and hopefully in years to come one day we do, it doesn't even have to be mentioned. Um, it can be really normal for three people like ourselves to be sat here and um, as groundbreaking and um, um, wonderful it is now, hopefully in years to come, it'll just be like uh, something that we don't have to even mention. And also how unifying that is something so joyful and fantastical as Bridgerton is the one that's the most watched. I mean, which doesn't make sense of Squid Game also now being the most watched, yeah, exactly. so extreme. <laughs> the, the thing is that connects us all is the humanity and family and love and faith and hope in, in love and that's what this show is all about. So it feels brilliant to be able to sit here and know that you're part of something that brings positivity mm. um, across the board um, and that's... It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm still always so grateful for <clears throat> anyone watching anything I ever do. You know, it just it's a real privilege that people will tune in and then they'll enjoy it. And the fact that people connected to Bridgerton so much and from literally, as you said, like all over the world, it absolutely blew our minds because it came out in the middle of a global lockdown. So the fact that, you know, people were watching it from absolutely everywhere was just, yeah, it's still hard to get my head around, but it's such a privilege, it's amazing. And I think in this industry, like, there are certain ideas that some things don't work, right? And Bridgerton's here to tell you actually, casting thoughtfully, casting diversely, trying to include people that are often marginalised 
works. Mm. People love it, it's successful, and we should be doing more of it. Yeah.